Welcome to the Church Communications Podcast this morning. I am Katie Allred, and as always, this is Josh Taylor. Hey guys, how are you? And we're excited today to be talking with you about budget cuts and what to add to your budget potentially. So this was a post, a question that I asked. I asked the question, what is one thing that you removed from your budget that you do not miss? And we got a lot of really great responses. So yeah, and some some that might be painful for some people. I think that some of them are going to be very painful, but worth okay. considering. You know, let's not die on a hill about it. Um, yeah, so let's just jump into it. So the first thing that people, the the main thing, the number one thing that people repeated over and over again of things that they removed were yellow pages and newspaper ads. Yeah, I didn't know the yellow pages were still a thing. Apparently, the yellow pages are still a thing, and they're coming after you, church. Mm. so <laughs> because we'll still spend money on them. <laughs> right i guess so right because they think ah oh, the church is archaic they don't know any they don't better. change <laughs> right and they're like they're but we do buy this yellow page who has looked up anything in the yellow pages or white pages recently no i don't even go to yellowpages.com if they gave me that book i put it directly in the trash if, the if people have to go to the Sorry. yellow pages to find you you're not marking yourself online very well yeah, I mean, and maybe if they are, then that's good, I guess. But I just, nobody's going in the yellow no, pages. No, because they should be able to find you on a Google search. They should be able to find you in the maps. Um, so, you know, if, if the only way people can find you is through yellow right. pages, it's not a good thing. I mean, if you're looking for a new church in the area, I don't automatically think go to the yellow pages. No. I usually think go to Google. And 15 Google years search. ago, I did. Right. But, but today, yeah, I just yeah. Which I'm trying to find a new church now, so it's not like I'm making up this stuff. Like, I, Or I'm, like, getting word of mouth, like, referrals, mm -hmm. right? So in Facebook, like, I'll go look at their Facebook. I'll go look at their Instagram. I'll website. go look at those things, their website. But I'm definitely not going to yellowpages.com. I'm not or downloading the app before I go either. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we should talk about Back last to week. last week. Yeah, back to last week. We're not downloading any church apps. Um, so, yeah, Yellow Pages newspaper ads. Okay, so that was not a separate thing, really. It was together. Mm -hmm. Did you ever do a newspaper ad for your church? No. Okay, we did. And I just don't know how effective it is because, you, of course, you know what their circulation is. Well, you were in Nashville, too. And right, I, and we have, a, Mobile, we have the Tennessee. So it's a little right? bit of a different so like, demographic. Yeah, right. We, we do have a really large newspaper. So, I mean, and we do actually have people who read the newspaper mm -hmm. in our area. So I guess that is nice. Um, where if you're in a small town, your small town newspaper, people might not actually read the small town newspaper. It really depends on upon People read small town newspapers to find names of people they know. Yeah, and like cut out the article and keep yeah. it forever. Yeah. Um, it's all that by accolades at this point, the mm -hmm. small town newspaper. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if newspaper ads are very effective just because you can't actually count how many eyeballs actually looked at that advertisement. Um, where with online advertising, you can get the actual count of who watched this video, who looked at this ad, who clicked on what, how long did they stay, where did they go after they clicked. Did they plan a visit? So, so your point is is looking at where most of our investment should be is where we can measure. Right. Okay. Yeah. If if you can't measure it, then why are you doing it? I think that's if you can't measure ROI, like your return on investment there. I mean, I struggle to say it's a win. I mean, really, the only way that you can measure it is by putting a question on your new visitor. Right. forum that says, how did you hear about us? Yep. And they put the newspaper or yellow pages. Literally any marketing activity that you do, make sure that has a smart goal attached to it, right? Uh, and what's a smart goal? It's a specific, measurable, attainable, achievable, like, or achievable or attainable. Um, smart. It's time specific, <laughs> right? And it's reachable. Yeah. So you can actually do it. That's smart. Um, and I, or the R could stand for something else. I don't know. Google it. Well, Michael um, Hyatt has a different one. And it's, uh, I can't remember what it is now, but he changed the R. Oh, okay. Something else. Yeah, yeah to something well, else. Well, smart goals are smart for a reason. And so just make sure, I think the biggest thing in a smart goal is making sure that it's timely and achievable and that you can measure it. Mm -hmm. And if you can do those things, then your marketing is going to do better because you're actually saying like, hey, what is, what's happening after this? You know, if you can't evaluate it, then you can't move forward and grow from it. Yeah. Ben Clark says he gets the yellow pages on his doorstep without asking for it. And, and promptly, promptly goes in there. So two good points there. One goes in his recycling. You're recycling. Great job, Ben. Um, also, uh, you get it right on your doorstep, but you, even though you get it for free and without asking, you still 
throw it away. Don't, yeah, you still get rid of it. So, um, yeah, Which, it turns into my son's too. coloring book. I will say that uh, some people do still use uh, the, the yellow page. Like, they'll still use that, and uh, but they're in a different age demographic. Yes, yes. And, and, and that is something to consider. If you're in a area where a lot of older, older people, people that are used to using the yellow pages do. It might be worth it. And I, I'm, I mean, like my parents are, they're in their fifties and sixties and they're still going to Google before yeah. they go to the yellow pages. Yeah. They don't even use the yellow pages anymore, right. but there are some demographics that do. I don't think it needs to be a big part of your budget. No. And most of us that are spending money on it, even if we need to spend money on it, can probably still cut the budget right. quite a bit on it. Like, is it the best stewardship of that money? Yeah. Or is there a better place where we can reach more people with the same amount of money? I think that's yeah. the question. You could use that money asked. to get an awesome Adobe suite. Yeah, if you can do that, then why not? Okay, so the next big one, and this is, again, just going back to traditional advertising. It's literally a big one. It's a big one, is a billboard. Yes. Okay. I think billboards are usually a waste of money, mainly because we don't use them really well. And either there's no we don't, call to action. No, there's no call to action. We either don't put enough information on it or we right. put too much information. All on it. it is is awareness. Like, unless you have a very clear call to action, like, um, I think that fast food restaurants do, uh, do mm -hmm. those well because you're like, exit 13, turn left. There's a McDonald's on the right. Like, okay, great. That's it's telling me exactly what I need to know about McDonald's. But if you're not doing that for a church billboard, if you're not saying exactly where you are or uh, an event that's coming up that's really important and very specific to reaching your community, then just creating awareness using a billboard, I don't think really serves your church very well. Yeah, they're driving past at 75 miles an hour, depending on who you are. And so they're not going to have time to read it. They're going to catch one thing. And so if you're going to do it, make sure that the information you need them to get right. is something that they could catch within a couple mm -hmm. of seconds because that's all the time they have to look at it. And in Alabama, we're notorious for our church billboards and not just church billboards, but Christian billboards, right? So mm -hmm. there's the uh, go to Go to church or the devil will get you. Yeah, the sign. famous one. That's how you know you're almost to Birmingham. Yeah, that's how you know. I'm, that's how I personally know that I'm almost home because it's like right before Verbena Clanton. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, I'm almost home because yeah. there's the go to church or the devil will get you sign. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, please Google it. You'll find it. Uh, there's also several like, you know, ones about reading the Bible and stuff. And I, I think that they might serve a purpose, but I think that you can probably get to people better uh, through a little more specific. Marketing. Unless you're Alexander Shannara. Then and you, you can, can buy you every want. billboard in the world. And you'll be known for it. Yes. So that's nice. And that will make you famous and it's a good use of investment. Right. So our next one is a printed bulletin. That one hurts. I know. And that's kind of turning directly from traditional advertising, right? So all of those things were outgoing things. This one is a very internal piece. Yeah. And that one, that one, people aren't quite sure what to do with, what do we do if we get rid of our printed bulletin? How do we let people know stuff? The reality is, is we put, so much information into those bulletins and we do it in a way that's not written super well right. that people aren't reading them. Right. If you put so much, if you are making your bulletin for everyone, you're making it for no one. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think like if you are giving out a printed piece, it really should be very simplified mm -hmm. if you are doing something. But at the same time, like just reevaluate, is this the best stewardship again of our time, but also our resources and money? Uh, because you're killing a lot of trees, right? So is there like a better way? Is there something that people are not going to immediately throw into the trash? And is there something that they could put on their, you know, refrigerator and remind them of things that are coming up at your church? Maybe it's a monthly thing. Maybe it's a yearly calendar. I saw a Jewish synagogue do a really awesome yearly calendar um, that I loved. That's I was cool. like, <laughs> um, actually my, uh, my aunt brought it down from Rochester and I was looking at it and I was like, this is really phenomenal. And they got it sponsored by people who were businesses in their church. Oh, that's a good idea. And so they had, somebody else pay for it. Well, yeah, well they had advertisements for those companies in it. Just like, you know, I guess yeah. like any other print piece that a, a company would put out like mm -hmm. that. And, and so it had advertisements, which was great, but in the entire calendar, every single day had like stuff for what was going on at the church. That's a really great idea. If you're going to print something internally, make sure it's something that people are going to find valuable and, and they're going to put up on the refrigerator. Right. Because if it's something that they're going to put on the refrigerator, they're going to see your name every single day when they go get milk out of the fridge. Right. Uh, but you're, they, they've put it there because you've mm -hmm. given them something valuable. Mm -hmm. 
a weekly bulletin is not going to be super valuable and it might be valuable for a day mm -hmm. uh, because it's got some information in there right. that they want to remember. They might put it in their calendar mm -hmm. on their phone and right. then throw it away. So right. I think that's a really, yeah. really good idea. And my aunt's not even Jewish, you know, but she uh, does a lot of work with, she's a caterer. So she does a lot of work with that synagogue and she still felt like it was really important enough to get one and then also to give me one. So I just think that's like worth it, right? If My you can find something carpenter. that people want to give away and like find really usable, maybe include community events in it too. I think that would be really fun if you create like a community calendar that also included your church events that people would love to give away and keep. I mean, I, th I think that's a win-win. Yeah. Um, Jeff asked a question where he's working on his communications budget this week. Any recommendations on what overall percentage should go to advertising and marketing? Uh, overall percentage of the whole church budget or just the comms budget? Um, overall, for me, I understand the overall budget, and I would say 30% mm -hmm. is a good number for your overall church budget should go to marketing mm -hmm. and, you know, communications. But from a communications budget, narrowing it down, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, there's like three different ways to do marketing budgets, and I wish I could remember all three. I literally taught them yesterday. I will leave you a link uh, just explaining those. Uh, maybe I'll do a, a blog post about them uh, coming up soon, but I think the 30% rule is, is good. I, I think it needs to be a percentage of maybe your tithes coming in or something. It needs to be, or maybe a percentage of how many congregants you're hoping to get in the next year. It needs to be like some kind of uh, percentage to where you can grow. So with traditional marketing, it is based upon products and product sales traditionally. Mm -hmm. And also there's like a rule of thumb measurement. Uh, so it really, it changes of course with a church. Yeah. So yeah, the average church is 30% marketing and 50%, 40% to 50% on staff. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it, it depends on the size of your church and, and, but that's the average church. But, you know, to Jeff, he's speaking specifically of his communications budget. So yeah, Katie, we'll post that link okay. in there to, uh, to help narrowing it down that specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking about that actually this morning. I was like, I really should write a blog post about the uh, budgeting, different budgeting ways that uh, secular places do it and then comparing it to what you can do for your church perhaps. There you go. Okay, so, but let's go on to what should you add to, to your budget if possible. Okay, so if you've cut some of these things, maybe you can add some new things. And I think the first thing that you can do, all of these things have to do with online advertising. Okay, so the first thing, of course, that you can do is Facebook or Instagram ads. Mm -hmm. So have you ran some Facebook ads in the past? I do. Um, one of the things that I will point people to is when you do Facebook or Instagram ads, don't just point people to the homepage of your website. Mm -mm. Sometimes use a lead generator that mm -hmm. offers people valuable information. Going back to what Katie just said, I think churches should take more advantage of being a place that communicates what to do on the weekend mm -hmm. in your community. So give them something of value. When people are scrolling, they're not that interested in checking out somebody's homepage, mm -hmm. but they are interested in downloading something that's valuable. Yeah. Or, or directly to a plan to visit page or something mm -hmm. like that. You have to give them a call to action. The, yeah. And the importance is that you're running an ad that has a call to action. So uh, AIDA is like a traditional marketing thing, right? You have to grab someone's attention. So maybe you've made a great video or something like that. And videos are traditionally the best on Facebook that work the best with you. Uh, you get the most bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. And so it's attention, interest, desire, then action. Okay. So you gain their interest eventually over again after you gain their attention. They're finally, they're interested in you. And then you have to figure out a way to get you, to get them to desire coming to your church and then you have to get them to take action and actually come to your church or plan a visit or send an email or do something, join an email list, something like that. And so, or the action can be to change a lifestyle or something like that. It, it can be to change behavior. And so in marketing, we, we talk about that a lot. Uh, yeah, sorry. I, didn't yeah, really know I think that's a great way on. to use Facebook ads. Uh, don't just point them to your homepage. Um, point them to where you want them to be, give them something of value, mm -hmm. you know, five ways parents can, 
uh, deepen their kids' spiritual um, spiritual growth. This you know five things you can do this weekend mm-hmm. to engage your children and in spiritual conversations. And the fifth thing can be come like to your come to your church. Yeah, visit us on Sunday right. and and talk about you know what they're going to do in your children's like, ministry and those things. Or if you're interested in learning more, give us your email. Da 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 da. We'll we'll be glad to email you or call you this week. Yep. Uh, just making sure that there's physical actual item for them to actually have to accomplish is the most important thing in your advertising don't like leave them hanging uh i think building awareness is great uh you have to do that because it traditionally it takes someone seven touch points uh sometimes 11 Mm. like seven to 11 touch points before they decide that they want to buy something so uh, how many more or is it the same for somebody who's deciding what church that they want to visit, right? So they may have seen an ad for the church. They may have passed the church actually physically. They may have uh, seen that their friends are going to the church, like seeing photos. And then finally, maybe a friend actually invites them to said church. And they're like, okay, finally, now I'm going to go, right? So a lot of times what you're doing may not actually have uh, the, the, actual thing that the physical item that they're actually going to accomplish but you have to do it so many times they have to see advertisements or see things about your church so many times right through social media through um, different forms of advertising through online advertising google ads uh, that we're about to talk about uh, before they make up their mind that they're going to go to your church yeah so it's an opportunity to build trust with them through those touch points so not just selling your church right but giving giving reasons why people should engage with you. We need like stories of life change, you know, Mm -hmm. more and more stories of what is going on in someone's life and how is Jesus uh, leading and guiding these people, this group of people. Right. Um, Okay. So the next thing is Waze ads. Okay. So Waze is a GPS app. If you don't know, it's the 21st century radar detector. If you've been, yeah, it is. It is a great radar detector because it will tell you where the police are. Uh, yes, that's, so, <laughs> that's why I use it, and the traffic. That's that's the main reason why I use it. Yeah. So it's actually owned by Google. Did you know that? I had no idea. Yeah, it used to be. It's an Israeli company, and yeah, you should watch. I There's a Conan no episode where Conan goes to Israel and he visits. He visits. He visits ways, and when he's there, he tells them that they need to fix the directions to his like favorite ice cream shop or something. That's funny. Because he's like, it's much shorter if you go this way. You need to <laughs> tell the people. And so, anyways, you should watch that episode. Besides the point, so Waze is now owned by Google. They got bought out. But, so you might actually notice that some of the features that are on Waze are actually coming over to Google. But the uh, the great thing that you can do with Waze right now that you cannot do with Google Maps is you can buy advertising. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed that when I'm driving, I'm seeing like restaurants pop up if I'm right. close to them or something like that. And not a lot of churches or places of worship are using ways to do that pop-up advertising. But I think it would be really awesome if on Sunday mornings, as people are driving, it would be a pop-up that says, hey. You know. If anyone has used advertising through ways, let us know because I'm interested in how that's worked out. And yeah. I'm interested in the like, There are the a few churches that have. And so, and there, I don't think that there's a limit. Like I know with Spotify, I think you, the limit, you have to spend like 30K or something a mm. year in order to get a Spotify ad. So it was like a really steep point of entry. I don't think that's true of ways. I think it's a, a much cheaper point of entry in order to get into it. So that's why I don't, I don't want, I didn't want to bring up Spotify ads because I was like, that is ridiculous. Yeah, so no church is going to do that today. But, um, we can totally do Waze ads, I think, and Facebook ads are zero point of entry. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is Google ads. Helping uh, your church be the first on the Google page, right? When people search for church. Yeah. Yeah. And and that can go either way. Uh, Google ads, again, it's, it's, it's using your investment wisely. And again, don't just, I mean, you can use Google ads to be the first to show up. A lot of people don't trust the little ads mm-hmm. logo at the bottom. And so they kind of skip over that and go right to the first organic search ones. So it could go either way for you. A lot of people don't care. They want to see just what's going to show up, put your name out there. Right. But also, again, use it also to generate valuable information for people, mm-hmm. build that trust. Um, and so I think Google ads is helpful, much more helpful than some of the more traditional ways of yellow pages and, and newspapers and those things. For sure. um, and if you're going to spend money on a billboard, you might as well just have a billboard on Google and be the first one that pops up instead Mm -hmm. of people driving by at 80 miles an hour. Right. Because they're using Waze and there's no cops around. 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And or or buy some ways ads like we, we talked yeah. about as well. It's almost like a digital billboard, right? Because it's popping up when mm -hmm. people are passing by. So yep. pretty much the same thing, except more annoying. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but they have to look at it and almost right. get in a wreck because they got to push the little X. So there you go. Um, all right. So anything else we want to talk about? I think we're good. I think that's good. Uh, some good questions there. And Jeff, uh, hopefully we can get the answer to your question there soon. Katie's going to post some information yeah. about that. Seth Muse has used Waze and has loved it. So Seth, uh, give us some more information on that if you're listening. And uh, we, I, I'd love to see, because I've not thought about that. You brought it up this morning and I noticed the ads coming up there mm -hmm. and, I, and I see them and they're really helpful for restaurants and especially if you're in a new city and mm -hmm. you're using it to get around that I didn't know this was here. Right. And so, I had no idea Taco yeah. Bell was on this corner. Yeah. What are so you talking you about? So I can get nacho fries right now. I'm driving around in a new city on Saturday and a church's ad pops up. I might think, hey, I might visit there tomorrow. Yeah, maybe because you know, it's there and we had no idea it was right there. So yeah. anyway, this has been great. If you're listening to this on Facebook Live, we appreciate you. And as always, we will um, upload this to iTunes and you can catch on Spotify, wherever you're fine podcasts are found uh, give us a review on uh, itunes five stars preferably and i uh, will talk to you next week